Hi, I'm Prashant, uh, Prashant Pradhan. I am executive director for Watson and Cloud for IBM uh, in India and South Asia. Uh, essentially, what I do as part of my role, I basically run a technology team comprising you know, deep learning and machine learning experts and Watson developers. So essentially, uh, that's, that's what I do. Part of my role is also engaging with the ecosystem, which basically means uh, you know, students, universities, uh, partners, startups, etc., who work along with us, build on our technology. So that that pretty much sums up what I do. So, for example, in our world, right, where we actually deal with uh, you know enterprises of all sizes, right, and and also a lot of partners and startups, you will actually notice that uh, anytime we are having a value conversation, it has to be it it's intimately linked to data, data science, and AI. And that's pretty much the reason why IBM is reinventing itself around being a cognitive and cloud company. So for so there's a spectrum of roles, right? At different, uh, depending upon where you are in your career. For mid-level professionals, I would say that typically these roles uh, essentially they, they span, you know, different functions. If you are in a customer-facing or a consulting type of a role, a lot of your work centers around uh, you know creating novel architecture centered around data and ai for for enterprise clients right or for partners right and if you are in a more deeply technical role then generally for a mid uh, mid level career professional i think the the switch will be if they are recently switching to analytics it's kind of a new uh, uh, new skill that they are learning then generally these would be you know entry level analytics uh, you know type of roles but um, once once you immerse yourself into it, you will actually realize that very quickly the needs of the role, right, uh, start to evolve into multiple dimensions, right? Looking at data architecture holistically, uh, doing more and more advanced, bringing more and more advanced capabilities to the clients in accordance to their business. So knowing the science is one thing, applying it to a given industry or a client's problem is quite another. So generally, mid-level career professionals will have you know some bit of a jump start on that, right? Because chances are that during their career, they've actually seen or engaged with clients and sort of mapped technology to the respective business problems that they have. So generally, you will actually see that that capability will come in handy, and they'll have to marry it with you know the science uh, of analytics that they're learning. You know, in in terms of uh, definition of. Uh, good data scientists or you know what tools should be they, they be familiar with so I, I actually don't think there, there is one particular tool right that you really need to be expert in but what what generally helps is to actually have a t-shaped uh, you know develop your capability in a t-shaped manner you need breadth as well as depth right and generally it is easy to go deeper uh, with you know your choice of whatever your favorite platform is right and you know, I think more, most of the open source tools in this area are relatively standard. Uh, people do not have a whole lot of variation in terms of the platform of the tool that they use, right? It's really the algorithms that they learn, right? And applying them to data sets, right? And, and generally, people will settle based on their own comfort level to a given tool. And that's basically a good way to sort of go deep, right? Look at a wide variety of problems and sort of understand them in, in certain degree of depth, right? However, as you advance in your career, you will actually see that uh, you know different problem statements actually require you to be very flexible with new kinds of tools. So, as an example, right, uh, a lot of people were doing deep learning using uh, you know a, a variety of libraries, right? And what you see happening is that over time, you know, remember the role of a data scientist is not in isolation, right? Th there's a community around you that influences you know um, kind of what are people doing right on some of the representative problems in each domain right so what what you will see is that a lot of that starts to get you will actually see that to get insight into a particular problem right you you may actually be leveraging some work that has been built by somebody else right and they may have a different choice of tool so so you know you have to be a quick learner you have to be uh, sort of flexible in terms of your adaption of platforms over time, you know, platforms also evolve. So you might actually find that a lot of work that you might have to do in terms of, you know, data prep or marshalling in certain tools, that improves over time. So the ability to actually switch to sort of newer platforms also helps you there because you will be able to easily exploit, you know, the new capabilities that are coming in those tools. So I would actually say that, you know, start with, you know, your choice of whatever you're most comfortable with 
go deep that's extremely important you know for you to uh, be successful later on in your career depth is very important and then start focusing on depth and be more flexible on your choice of platforms right as you go so in terms of what skill sets we look for right uh, obviously it depends on the target function right that we are looking at the candidate for right so obviously a lot of young professionals right that we would hire would typically need to have you know solid grasp on uh, all the you know uh, so data science has this science as well as art you know to it right and uh, a good grounding in the basic concepts a good grasp on any one tool i mean we we're not hung up upon you know what, what particular tool is their favorite one right so people who come in actually come in with sort of their own view of what they are most comfortable with and we we'll really look initially for solid grasp on that concepts on those concepts good experience in terms of having worked with uh, uh, you know uh, popular data sets or problems for example a lot of the people uh, i generally hire i mean i i've looked for for example uh, have they been active on some of the communities have they done for example kaggle competitions and so forth right so that generally gets you a good idea that it's not just your knowledge is not just conceptual or theoretical but you've applied it and uh, the roadblocks that you might hit as a young data scientist in terms of you know dealing with the data trying different kinds of methods you've kind of been there been in the trenches right so that tends to be important for entry level roles however you know as you go as you uh, move to more senior roles as i said i mean part of it starts to look like art right because you know once you have a, a very solid grounding as well as experience fair bit of experience in applying data science the art part you know starts to look at okay feature engineering right do you have domain intuition right in terms of so if you are applying data science to a healthcare domain or a retail domain right or a banking or financial services domain right it generally it, the, the, you know having the domain expertise and some degree of intuition in terms of how to apply this right becomes very handy and also very important right because our clients are not going to come up with sort of shrink wrap problems or predefined that okay here is what i need to solve using xyz algorithm that's not how it happens we have to have the conversation very holistically right at advanced stages which involves both the data architecture aspects as well as the ai or the data science on top right so your ability to have that kind of intuition your ability to understand what features are important what is not and ideally if you're coming in with some you know great domain expertise right i mean we would love to see that because that generally allows us to get a great head start and much less you know sort of uh, i would say improvisation when we're dealing with a particular industry verticals problems so i would i would look at more advanced professionals more in terms of you know their intuition their ability to do data art as opposed to data science because they've probably been in the space for a while and you know the the aspects of you know the basic you know tooling and all of that is already taken care of so so very different ways of evaluating right when uh, when when we look for uh, the, these skills so in, in terms of uh, you know uh, advice for somebody who's just starting out so i think see the good news is that uh, it it's not very hard right uh, it, it just requires a little bit of i would say discipline and being very open minded in terms of you know looking at a lot of different problems lot of different approaches of solving the same problem a, a lot of the expertise in data science actually comes of course you need to have the foundation right so all the uh, you know underlying math and uh, you know all the underlying uh, tooling or the programming yes th those are uh, i think uh, important prerequisites and if you are getting into a data science career i mean my assumption would generally be that you are reasonably comfortable in those foundational aspects however given that you don't have experience right getting uh, you know comfortable with uh, you know a lot of a variety of problems you know working with actual data sets etc is actually not that hard all it requires is a little bit of i think sustained discipline so my advice to folks who are just starting out is that once they've got the grounding right into the basic concepts they really need to start looking at applications right very early on right there's so much uh, you know community and content out there right that uh, this this is very easy right i mean a lot of people so we ourselves for example uh, one of the things we do is the so called developer journeys right so developer journey is basically like a pathway 
in which you actually pick up a particular problem and generally we derive it from something which is practically important and it could be from a banking domain it could be from a health domain and so forth and we will actually guide you uh, in, in terms of you know kind of how you build that up all the way from you know the, the managing the data to actually applying and trying different kinds of approaches to getting to you know what's most likely an ideal uh, you know kind of uh, solution so with this kind of uh, sort of pathway or, or this type of content available, it becomes extremely easy, right, for you as somebody who's just starting out to quickly, you know, get comfortable with practical applications of the problem. So I think, you know, the, the, there might be a little bit of apprehension that I've never done this before. But I think if you are committed to this area and committed to building a career here, uh, it's it's just not hard. And, you know, we are, we are here as a community to sort of support the students through that. And that's you know, part of the uh, basis for some of this partnership, right? That um, uh, let, let's go ahead and make it easy for people to adopt data science careers. Mm -hmm. Just to rephrase your question, I mean, what, what are ideal algorithms that one should look at? What is most popular? I, I would actually say, again, once you immerse yourself in the field, this will become very clear. It's more about algorithms mapping to specific kinds of problems, right? So classification, regression, those kind of problems. Th there's generally a fairly good ensemble of methods. and there is fair bit of intuition out there in terms of which ones will work for what category of problems. For example, if you are building a recommender system, right, uh, the, the, it's fairly well understood, right, the science behind it and why certain kinds of techniques will work uh, better than, than others, right. So, so again, uh, the point is that, you know, it's important to get a good grounding in the foundational concepts, right? The tools and the algorithms then will come naturally to you. This intuition you will develop over a period of time, right? That what's the right one to apply. Now, again, but that's in the beginning stages, right? As you evolve, you will actually see that this field is actually rapidly evolving. Even though a lot of the theory in this field has been known, right, for decades. Uh, the point is that, you know, now it has become, imp now it has become very easy right for you to apply there's a lot of data which wasn't there before right i mean world is getting digitized so the amount of data available to us is, is very large so t as training sets you have high quality training sets available right and similarly you know a lot of compute power right so for example uh, in the, the gpu accelerated cloud that we have in india right we actually offer that as a key way for people to get started on you know compute intensive workload so the, the the barrier to entry is actually very low right both on the compute and on the data and sheer amount of information available out there right so so essentially you uh, you start to see that the big jumps that come right are really in the form of uh, uh, you know completely new paradigms right so for example you start from more of statistical methods moving on to uh, you know deep learning right deep learning has its own variations right i mean there is a gradation of complexity there from you know basic neural networks to you know recurrent neural networks convolutional neural networks and gans right so these are all they actually build upon the other right so there's a natural sequence to follow in terms of which algorithms and uh, you know g generally it's not good to try and jump ahead just because something is looking cool so for example deep learning has this uh, interesting uh, you know there are so many interesting applications that what i've seen is that you know young data scientists they tend to be very attracted to sort of the coolest application of deep learning that's out there so they'll generally try to sort of you know jump ahead without necessarily going through right the incremental evolution of these methods right so I would say resist that temptation, right? I mean, plan your pathway in terms of learning these algorithms in a natural way. And again, uh, when we design a course, right, or the you know the kind of content that uh, you know we we for example contributing right to the partnership, the it really takes you through that kind of a learning pathway where uh, in a grid in a in a very uh, natural progression we will introduce those concepts layering one upon the other and that will generally help in terms of you know uh, you choosing the best algorithms for for your problem statement how important is it for a data scientists to have machine learning skills right so somebody who's probably in analytics more descriptive analytics move to so you know i would actually say that you know uh, people should no longer make that distinction it is a continuum so just like you know you you start if you're a doctor right 
uh, and uh, you know you, you won't stop learning right typically I mean, if, if you want to do well in your career you generally continue to look upon build upon your strengths so you know saying that uh, okay I do analytics right which is more of sort of the descriptive analytics BI reporting all of that and then that's what I do and machine learning is kind of this other sort of thing that sits on the side that that's actually no longer true I think uh, the it's uh, it's not really a distinct topic if you spent enough time in analytics and you know you have intuition about data and all of that it will be easier actually for you to go into machine learning but it's not something that is optional I can tell you as I was saying in the beginning of the interview see any value conversation right we are having right now with clients it actually spans you know this spectrum right there's bound to be you know machine learning deep learning you know applications in there right so so the key point is that my advice to to young professionals would be to not look at it as distinct things right think of machine learning as sort of the next level of evolution or whatever you know on analytics right and and i would i would strongly discourage trying to sort of ring fence them into that i'm an analytics guy i don't do machine learning i mean that's not going to be great for your career going forward because lot of the lower level stuff is going to get commoditized whether we li like it or not so your intuition about you know machine learning what you can do with it is is extremely is is a uh, is almost a, you know mandatory part of your career progression as a data science professional yeah